hey guys, welcome back to my channel, the number one place for new and aspiring lawyers on all things law school, the lawyering life, and the legal industry. i'm so excited about today's video because we are talking about an insanely important topic for new lawyers in particular, which is how to manage your money. because for new lawyers coming right out of law school, starting their legal careers for the first time, you're talking about people in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and making, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars in income for the first time. And so those two things colliding together oftentimes lead to very bad financial mistakes and, and financial pitfalls. And so understanding and learning what those are and how to get out of them so that you aren't stuck in a career that you hate or in a life that no longer brings you happiness is so, so, so important. And financial independence and financial freedom are very big components that feed into that. And so if you are interested in learning about the biggest financial mistakes that young attorneys tend to make and how to avoid them, then keep watching. Guys, I'm so excited for today's video because we have Errol Atak of the Armstrong and Atak Financial Group LLC based out of Chicago. He's a co-founder, he's a financial strategist working specifically with young lawyers who are starting out at law firms. So Errol, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here and welcome. Hi Angela, thanks so much for having me here. Okay guys, so it's important to know that this is not a sponsored video. Errol cannot give specific financial advice to you guys as a general audience, but we are going to be talking about really important financial factors that affect all young attorneys as you move through your careers, as you begin your careers. And so that's what the focus of today's video is because this is such an important aspect of starting out your career as a lawyer. Okay, so first question, biggest question, what are some of the biggest financial difficulties that you see young lawyers having on a consistent basis? The biggest financial difficulties that I've seen young attorneys with, number one, and this may not be a shocker, student debt. It's not uncommon to see associates with over $250,000 in student debt with also very high interest rates. And so the high interest rates oftentimes that I see give me a panic attack because the banks are taking more money out of their pocket than they perhaps should. And so this could be an opportunity where you may be able to save thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on student loans. The second is savings for future. Associates typically what I've seen work somewhere between 70 to 100 hours, basically working 24 seven, right? And so they oftentimes lack the time and energy to focus the financial future as well as the financial today to live it the, the way that they want. And the third, and I call this more of the Hollywood effect, more of the riches effect, it's, it's where you start help and family. You know, you may not necessarily come from a wealthy background as an associate, but out of nowhere, you're making somewhere 150, 190, 200, and above. And then out of nowhere, you, you either help family, parents, or you may be helping cousins, relatives that you may have not seen for the past decade. In addition to the biggest financial difficulties you're seeing that you just talked about, what are some of the biggest spending habits that maybe young attorneys do that get them into trouble? Yeah, so I don't know if this is a fun one or a scary one, but essentially what I see is two major ones. The first one, food delivery, rideshare. All of you out there who are associates, you will be working ridiculous hours day and night. And so that oftentimes means that you're not meal prepping as much, you don't have as much time to take maybe public transportation, or you're just eating out a lot in general. And so I have seen cases and scenarios, not just one, but multiple cases where someone will spend $150, $100 a day on right here and food. Number two, saving up for big ticket items. And what I mean by big ticket items is like, it could be fun. It could be your home. It could be a condo. It could be a car. And what I oftentimes see is coming out of law school and starting at a big law firm, typically you'll start making $190,000 with a $15,000 bonus. That's a lot of money that you come into, right? You work for it, you earn it, you deserve it. But then you'll end up spending maybe three, four, I've seen $5,000 a month on rent, on a mortgage. And what that in essence does 
is gives you less of an opportunity to plan for your future. And I'm not just talking about plan for retirement. I'm talking in the standpoint of you may be creating an opportunity of creating your own golden handcuffs in your career, or you may not be taking advantage of savings for your future where you, where you may be missing out on compound interest, which is the younger you start, even if it's at a smaller bit, the more time it has, the faster it's going to be grown, the older you get. And that is so amazing that you are talking about this specifically because I love talking about this topic. The the problem of the golden handcuffs of spending too much money too early of getting comfortable with a lifestyle that's sort of an elevated one that you don't necessarily need or even maybe necessarily even want um, that puts you in the situation not only like you say not to be able to plan for your future and to save money and to take advantage of compound interest and all the things that set you up for life you know 5 10 15 50 years down the road um, but also don't in the short term, don't give you the freedom to, for example, walk away from a job that you don't want to be working at anymore. So, you know, in big law, there's a lot of turnover, but there's people who stay, you know, four, five, seven, 10, 15 years when if they had planned correctly, they could have stayed for two or three paid off student loans and then go and get the job that they really want. So talking about spending, saving, budgeting, what are some of the biggest misconceptions that you see young attorneys having over and over with respect to these topics? I have three for you today. Number one is how much you spend on rent or mortgage. So percentage of your income that should be going towards rent or mortgage, what we're taught is like 30 to 33%. Who gave us those stats? Why is that the magic number? Who created that rule of thumb? Why does one size fit all? It doesn't. That's the thing, right? Number two, student loans. The name of the game is paying them off, right? It's that thing that you got so that you could be an attorney, so that you can practice and do what you love. Um, oftentimes, the thing that scares me more than how much you owe is actually the interest rate. I've seen anywhere between 3% to 12%. I've seen fixed, I've seen variable. I get a bit of a panic attack when I see interest rates are higher. There are strategies to go about paying it off. Some people wanna pay it off super aggressively. Some people wanna play the slow game on it. Some people are just like, eh, it's a preference thing. And at the same time, one size does not fit all for that either. Number three, tax considerations. I'm not, in, I'm not a CPA. I, I don't give tax advice. But I do know how income works as well as savings for the future works. So I see many young attorneys, typically let's just say $200,000 is what they're making um, working at a big law firm. But they don't take into consideration federal, state, local, food, um, sales tax, like all these different taxes that could swing anywhere from 30% to 50%, maybe even sometimes more depending on spending habits, going to Uncle Sam. And so if we're strategic about how we save our money, we could be tax smart about our future too. And I think that's such a good point. And I'll link in the description below a video I made called What I Made Versus What I Spent for my, two, my first two uh, jobs out of law school, because one was a federal judicial clerkship in Dallas, Texas, and one was working at a big law law firm in New York City. And I specifically talk about that, what you just mentioned, that there's the differences in the tax bases, because just like you said, there are some states like New York, for example, that where you're not only gonna pay federal tax, you're also paying state and city tax. And then as opposed to living in Texas, for example, where we don't have state or city tax. And so that is a huge consideration. It is really important, just like you say. Well, Errol, thank you so, so much for being here with us today. I love all of all things financial planning. I think it just creates so many wonderful opportunities um, in your life. And especially for young associates, uh, young attorneys just coming out of law school or working in the first few years of their job, this information is vital, vital to understand and to apply. And so thank you. Thank you again for being here. Angela, it's absolutely been a full pleasure for me. I've really enjoyed this and 
I think you put out such great and terrific, valuable information for those young attorneys, associates out there. And I'm honored to be a part of it too. So thank you. Excellent. And guys, I'm going to link in the description below all of Errol's contact information, a description of the services that he uh, provides to young attorneys in case you guys are interested or want to reach out. I'm also going to link in the description below some financial planning documents, sort of a get start guide um, that is going to link to his website in case you guys want to follow up and learn more. And so, like I said, it's not a sponsored video, but it is such vital, amazing financial advice that I want you guys um, to be able to have access to and to be able to um, apply in your own lives. And so it's been a pleasure, Errol, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Angela. Take care.